Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome to the NoDQ.com post Battleground 2017 review video. Now, if you thought tonight's pay per view was a good show, I suggest you click this off right now because I thought that this was one of the worst WWE pay per views, not just of 2017, but in many years. Many years. I cannot even remember the last WWE pay per view that was this bad. So. I'm sure we have different opinions here. Maybe a few of you liked the pay-per-view better than I did. We'll go ahead and break it down real quick, just to sum it up. Virtue, your thoughts on the show overall. I was right on five of the six match outcomes on the main card and something that happened at the end. And I'm upset that I was right on that many because I, I did not enjoy this pay-per-view. Um, there was one thing I, I did like, and I'll, when we get to that, I'll mention it. Like I did, I really liked it kind of was a, uh, a curveball to me. Um, but yeah, it, it felt like a three hour, um, edition of SmackDown. What do you think, Greg? See, I, I'm not gonna come out and outright say that I didn't care for this pay-per-view. It wasn't my favorite. It was probably a middle of the road. Okay. Pay-per-view, but I, Aaron, I don't think it was the worst pay-per-view in years. I've seen worse. Name one. Um, I thought Payback was much worse. If you were Which 6 payback? to 12 years... This year's? Yes, this year's. If you were the 6 to 12 payback. years old, if you were 6 to 12 years old, you probably enjoyed tonight's show. I don't even know if then. Um, but... Payback... It was, it was okay. It had its moments. Payback was the Roman Reigns Braun Strowman match that was not the ambulance match. Yeah, because right. the ambulance match that, was that was probably the highlight of that show. Which yeah. thankfully that was amazing. Well I thought that was better than anything on this show, to be honest with you. I thought that the Roman Reigns Braun Strowman match was pretty good. But anyways, uh Kyle, your thoughts on the show. And by the way, Kyle's on. We were originally gonna have Jeff on the panel, but you know, Jeff had this very intense trivia battle with Greg Cherry. We will not spoil it in case you have not watched it yet. But Jeff and Greg had a very intense match. And Jeff, he's feeling a bit under the weather. He's stressed out. Kyle, I've heard you want to challenge Jeff for trivia. Is that true? I do want to challenge Jeff, actually. And I don't think he showed up because he knew I was going to be here, actually. So I think he's a little scared of some competition. Oh, is there a little bit of heat between you guys now? Mm-hmm. I've got a belt. He's got a belt. Let's see who the well, trail is. You know, when, when certain people cross paths with Jeff Meacham, they tend to disappear. So you may Ooh. want to tread lightly, my friend. All right, we'll see how it goes. I'm looking forward to the challenge. All right, we'll see what happens with that. Anyways, let's talk about the pay-per-view. Let's go ahead and start off with the kickoff match, which was Ty Dillinger versus Ain English. Fine, fine kickoff match, although I did notice a sign of things to come. It, it did feel like the crowd heat was lacking right from the beginning of the show. Usually the pre-show matches tend to have some good heat. You know, it's the first match of the night. The fans are excited to be there. They're hot for the opening match. There wasn't a lot of heat for this. Now, there hasn't been much buildup, granted, but still, you would think that since it was the opening match that there would just be heat by default. I was happy that Aiden English won, even though it was <laughs> WWE's typical 50-50 booking. You know, I, I do not see what the big deal is with Ty Dillinger. He has the 10 chant, but other than that, the guy does not stand out to me. I like Aiden English's character with the singing and all that. I find it to be more entertaining than what Ty Dillinger is doing at this point. But that's just my opinion. I thought it was a, a, a fine, a perfectly acceptable kickoff match. Uh, Greg, your thoughts on the match and then Virtue. Um, I, well, I can't give thoughts on the match. I actually missed the kickoff. Um, well, then never but, mind. Yeah, I was going to say. Here, here's the thing with Ty Dillinger. Ty has been so poorly booked since coming to SmackDown. And he was admittedly booked pretty poor in his last few months of NXT. Um, but he is over with the crowd. He has the 10 chant, which may not be a lot, but it's a fun thing to do. Much like the yes chant for Daniel Bryan, much like the what chant for uh, Stone Cold. Uh, it's, it's fun. It gets the crowd involved, and it, it's something to do. It, it's just the way he's booked. Not as poorly booked as Bailey. I'm still holding mm -hmm. on to that. But, you know, if... if Ty Dillinger got the opportunity, much like Aiden English. If they got the opportunity on the main show with some sort of buildup, it probably would have been uh, a little more heat to that match. 
virtue? Yeah, it was just uh, it was a meh opening. It felt like I was watching the first match on a SmackDown. Uh, so he's not the perfect ten. I mean, that gimmick is ruined when you're booked fifty fifty against an opponent. So he's the imperfect five. Pretty much. I mean, that, that's all I got to say about it, Kyle. When I was at an NXT house show in uh, Sacramento in October, Ty Dillinger was by far the most over person there. And it's just pretty sad to see him booked the way he is. And actually, he's not that bad of a wrestler. I don't think he's as bad as a lot of people say he is. But it's all right. Again, it, it's it's the booking. It, it's compl- it, I completely agree with you. It's the booking. And I, it just makes no sense. And it's like, where did both of these guys go from here, really? I yeah. mean, I thought I, like, I thought – that he was fine in this match. I think he's a decent wrestler, but he's in a sea of great wrestlers. You know, you need to be beyond average if you're going to really stand out in WWE. And I think he's just okay. I just think he's a, a decent average wrestler with an average look. Maybe they need to start doing NXT call downs. Maybe. <laughs> That's where these guys were over. I mean, you know? the chant was hot, so it made sense to call him up when the chant was hot. But yeah, like you said, they... They really did not do much with him after that. They should have just gone all the way with him. If you're going to call him up, then strap the rocket to him, give him a good six months or so and see where it can go, which they did not do in his defense. All right, so let's talk about the opening match of the pay-per-view, the first actual pay-per-view match, which was the Usos defending the SmackDown Live tag titles against the New Day. New Day, they were wearing American flag gear. This was almost like Great American Bash 2.0 with this whole theme throughout the show of America versus the world. Um, I thought this was a very good match. I was entertained by it. It was fun. It was fast-paced. Just what you would expect from these two tag teams. And we got a title change. Now, I'm honestly sick of the New Day. The act's been stale for me for quite a while now. But whatever. It's not like it really bothered me that they won the titles. I predicted it to happen. And uh, I was entertained by the match. So not too much critical to say about this one. This was maybe actually... I think, in my opinion, this was the best match on the entire show, but we'll talk more about that later and come to a final consensus on that. So, um, Virtue, let's start with you, and then Greg, and then if uh, Kai wants to add anything. And new WWE SmackDown Tag Team Champions. Yes. Get those belts off the Usos. Send them to Kerry Roman's We need these guys. We need these guys. Look, I was surprised that Big E was not in the match like I thought he would be. When was the last time Kofi and Xavier teamed up? Maybe I missed it. So it was a little more fast-paced, high-flying action. And as the match and the false finishes started happening, it got exciting towards the end. So I I like the New Day winning there. Not just because I said they would, but... um, I just think, you know, Usos had the belts for, you know, a few months. I, when did they win? When did the Usos win? When did they beat American Alpha? That would have uh, SmackDowns before uh, WrestleMania. Yeah, yeah so I, I thought it was time, you know, let one more stick with the New Day doing that whole phrase with the belts that they do. Maybe this title reign could lead to a breakup for them. Um, what do you think? I'll go to Kyle. Unfortunately, I did not see this match because I was still driving home at the time, but... I have not been a fan of the New Day, honestly, at all. I have not liked the group even at the, from the beginning. Even, even in 2015. Turned... No, I did not. What a party I honestly, pooper you I, are. This is why we cannot I, I, have nice things. I know, right? But <laughs> honestly, I've never liked the New Day. I, I, I don't know what it is about them. I just find them pretty obnoxious and annoying. I, I don't know. I just find their act very over the top, and I, I'm just not a fan of that. I mean, I, I prefer... At, I don't know. It's just really, it's really hard for me to say. I mean, I, me and my grandpa always argue about the New Day, and he, he's, he, I, he's actually more of a fan of them than I am. Interesting. But he, they started I, off as heels, Kyle, but then they got over with the kids. I mean, that, mm-hmm. that's why I think they've been booked the way they have. Mm-hmm. The colorful and it's just, gimmick, yeah. And it's just been too, it's just been too, too comedy filled with for me, for my taste. I don't know. I've just never liked the New Day as a, as an act. I mean, n- nothing to take away from their wrestling ability. They're all great. Honestly, they're all pretty great wrestlers, but I don't know. I just never liked the act, and I never got behind it. And I'm just not a fan of them winning the titles again. And I thought the Usos were doing pretty good as heels now. But, I agree on that. And I pre- and honestly, and honestly, I wish Brizongo would have took the titles from them when they had the shot back a couple of months ago. Well, but. they're too busy feuding over their their dead peppy wannabe horse, and <laughs> I guess feuding. We don't even know. I mean, we'll get to that later. But yeah. they got some other thing going on. So. Uh, 
Greg, anything you want to add to the match? Well, here's the thing. I like the New Day, and I've liked the New Day for a long time. Um, the three of them, I mean, you watch them on TV. If you watch Up, Up, Down, Down, they're hysterical on there, too. I mean, that that's such a great channel. Um, Xavier Woods is a gaming channel, Austin Creed. Um, but back on Xavier, I think he's one of the more underrated members of the New Day. Like, you see Kofi and Big E wrestle all the time. You see what they can do. But Xavier is his member underrated? Really Sorry to interrupt. What's that? But is his member underrated? Let's not get rated R. <laughs> By the way, they cut that out. That was annoying. They, no mention of that whatsoever. <laughs> well, I was going to say, um, Xavier Woods showed why he belongs as a member of the tag team champions. I mean, it's not just him being the manager, which he's good at as well, for Kofi and Big E. Like, he can actually go in the ring. I thought it was a little like tribute to Consequences Creed from his yeah, TNA, yeah. Days, the American flag gimmick. So that was kind of cool. Um, but I like the title change. The Usos did well as heels. I'll give them their due as well, but match of the night easily. Well, I, I agree with you on that one. And, and nice uh, touch there to bring up Consequ Consequences Creed. I didn't even think about that. So that's a nice little tidbit there. All right. So moving on here, Shinsuke Nakamura or... What did Jerry Lawler call him? He totally botched the name during the pre-show. I missed that. Sinsuke or something. He, he just said the name completely wrong. It was hilarious. I'm sure it'll be on the next Botchamania. Uh, Nakamura uh, versus Baron Corbin. Uh, I was disappointed with this. I, I thought it was actually a pretty boring match. I'm just not sure what the deal was. Maybe the two guys don't have the chemistry together, but um, it wasn't working for me, and the crowd was not into it. Um, I was I was very disappointed. And then to top it off, it ended with a low blow DQ. And my question is, if you're trying to protect both guys, then why even book the match in the first place? Keep them separate from each other. Somebody on Twitter said, well, people would complain if these guys were not on the show. Easy solution. Book them against other people. I just, I'm not a fan of the DQ finishes. And I really have no interest now in seeing this feud continue after this match. So to me, this was... Uh, very underwhelming. Um, Kyle, did you see this one? Um, unfortunately, I did not. But oh. you want to talk about someone who's been handled poorly on the main roster? I mean, look at Nakamura. Look how poorly he's been booked since he joined the main roster. Well, the problem I is mean, he needs to he needs to be able to do the WWE sports entertainment stuff, and they're trying to do that with the artist and all that. You know, the problem is he cannot mm -hmm. really cut the promos, and that that's going to hurt him a little bit. And uh, the way he would shine would be in the ring, you know, doing some amazing stuff. And we just haven't seen that yet on the main roster. I mean, the match with Ziggler was pretty good, but he needs to have like one of those New Japan Pro Wrestling style matches in WWE to win over the, the casual audience. I mean, that's how I see it at this point. He's got to be more than just an entrance. What do you think, Greg? See, I, I did catch most of the match. There were a couple bits and pieces I missed, but yeah. I don't know what the deal was. Like it, it should have been a good buildup between Money in the Bank and Corbin attacking Nakamura. And I'm a Baron Corbin fan too. Like uh -huh. I, I've been a fan of him since before he was called up. And of course, I got to see the end of day, so I was finally happy he busted that out. But I, I don't know what the deal was. There seemed to be very little heat in this match. Or maybe it was just the crowd. Maybe it was just a dead crowd. I don't know. But they weren't reacting to anything. Philly. I know. This Philly is quite, is yeah. It was Corbin. Corbin was doing all the old school power stuff and Nakamura was trying to sell it and the crowd. Get, what? Here's what should have happened. I know he landed, Corbin landed a deep six. I think the end of day should have been landed in the match, not afterwards. And then there should have been a dramatic kick out by Nakamura. And then he started doing his fluttering and all of this. Then I think that crowd would have, would have got excited. Then they could have went to the no DQ or the DQ, the no DQ, the DQ finish. But I just don't think the match was laid out right. I was bored. I agree. I mean, good, good assessment. Sorry, of the I match. didn't cut you off, did I, Greg? No, you, you were fine. I basically gave all my all thoughts. Right. Like, I, right. I like Corbin. I like Nakamura, but this match just seemed off somewhat. Yeah, huh? the layout of the match is weird. Maybe, maybe they'll step things up at SummerSlam. I'm assuming that'll be a match at SummerSlam. Next up, we had the women's five-way elimination match, speaking of SummerSlam, to determine Naomi's opponent at SummerSlam. Naomi was on commentary.
basically the story of the match, Lana and Tamina were working together. Becky managed to tap out not only Tamina, but Lana as well, and then was immediately pinned by a roll-up from Natalia. And then it was down to Charlotte and Natalia, and Natalia ended up winning the match. Charlotte went for her, her big moonsault. Natalia got her knees up and then pinned Charlotte. Um, I thought the match was fine, but I was shocked at how poorly Charlotte was booked in this match. I mean, Becky was protected. Becky tapped out two people and got pinned with a roll-up. Charlotte just lost, flat-out lost to Natalia. Um, so that's interesting. I'm, I'm really surprised. I'm happy for Natalia, though. I mean, she definitely yep. deserves this opportunity. But at the same time, I feel bad for Charlotte. I mean, she has cooled off so much since moving over to SmackDown Live. I mean, she's just another person now. When on Raw, she was the, the big deal. She was the top star. So, Virtue, I'll start with you. Your thoughts on the match. What I don't like about these elimination matches is sometimes they wait too long and then it's, you know, fall, 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 all in a row. And I that's, agree. that's pretty much what happened. I, I I wanted Becky to win so I could be right versus all you because <laughs> I course. think everybody picked Charlotte. <laughs> but everybody picked Charlotte. But then I started thinking, man, you know, Natty, she really hasn't had anything since back in the – was it the Mickey James and Beth Phoenix days? Probably. She was the Divas champion. So she's a veteran now, and she deserved this. So I – this was the spot of the night that I appreciated the most. Her going over and becoming number one contender. Um, for all we know, they could still add a Charlotte and a Becky and have a multi multiple person match at SummerSlam. But Natty is going to SummerSlam, hopefully, to get a shot at the title. So I, I love that. But these matches, the elimination matches with five people, it, it, they get quirky. What do you think, Kyle? I was a big fan of Natalia winning, and to be honest, I was actually surprised about how Charlotte was booked. I agree with you, and it's like <laughs> ever since she went over to SmackDown, it's like, wow, she's lost a lot of her steam, and she had, and she still had a huge pay-per-view record, and now that record is just keeps going down and down and down. It's just it's so surprising how bad Charlotte's been booked, but to be honest, I really hope Natalia goes on and wins the title at SummerSlam because I'm. It's nothing against Naomi. It's just Natalia's paid her dues. She's been wrestling yes. in the WWE now for ten years, believe it or not. It's been 10 years since Natalia debuted, and I can't believe it's been that long, and she's only had like a really small title reign, and I believe it was actually back in the Lay Cool days when I think she won it from Lay Cool. If, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that she won it from Lay Cool. But, um, yep, um, but yeah, I'm really happy for Natalia, and I'm surprised that Tamina got eliminated first. I was actually kind of surprised about that. I thought they were just going to keep like making Lana eliminated first or something like that and have Tamina go on a tear for some reason i almost predicted tamina was gonna win but i guess i was wrong but i don't know because they've been throwing so many surprises at us lately with random people winning at random times yeah but yeah but what do you think Greg? Yeah. see I, I like the fact that natalia won too i think this might be up there it, it's competitive with aj and owens for a second best match of the night so i'm not sure which one i'm going with but i really enjoyed this match um i think the right person won I think Charlotte getting another shot would have been like, oh, uh, okay. But Natalia and Naomi, that should be a fresh matchup for the championship. And I hope Natalia wins as well. I mean, she really deserves a chance to be a uh, women's champion, not just Divas champion. Yes. Yeah. And do you think the title change will happen this soon? Because N N Naomi just got her custom made belt. Usually, yeah, that, that, that's, a, that's a very yeah, good point, been, Kyle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but she's been champion since WrestleMania. Like, she may have just got the customization, but she's been champion for almost, it'll be four months yeah. by the time SummerSlam rolls around. I think it depends on how marketable they think she is. If, if she's selling merchandise, doing doing the stuff with the Glow title, then I could see them keeping the title on her. Who knows? Is there 1.3 billion people in Florida, Orlando, where she's from? <laughs> no, there are not. Okay. See how I did that? I, I see what yeah. you did there. <laughs> All right. Next up, we had AJ Styles defending the U.S. title against Kevin Owens with one of the weirdest finishes in a WWE pay-per-view in quite some time. Now, as for the match itself, I thought it was fine, but I was actually also disappointed in this match. I, I think this might be a little bit of a controversial comment, maybe not, but I thought that this was the worst AJ Styles match on a WWE pay-per-view since he arrived. I mean, I thought it was just okay. I, I did not think it was anything special. And the finish, I mean, that got a lot of people confused, head-scratching what was going on here. Um, what it looked like watching it back a couple of times, AJ had his shoulder up, 
and the referee did not see that. The referee thought AJ's shoulders were down, although from the camera angle, it looked like the referee could see it. I, I don't know. But it just the execution of it, I thought, was poor. And uh, there were people telling me at ringside AJ looked to be legit, legitimately pissed off, so maybe they, they bought something. I don't know. But the whole thing was very awkward, and um, yeah, I thought, I thought it was a letdown. Um, Virtue, your thoughts on the match? I think when you have an Owens and a Styles wrestling, expectations are set so high. That's true. These guys, it almost looked like, and I hate, I, I never want to say this about these guys, especially AJ. It almost looked like they mailed it in, which for them, it still comes across as a fairly decent match. Yeah. Maybe as to not take attention away from the flag match that was to follow and the prison match. So I felt like they worked a, a SmackDown style match. And again, the finish was weird. Um, I felt all along the belt would go back to Owens because I just think that was a little publicity stunt to put it on AJ. Owens is the face of Amara KO. Where is that shirt? Uh, the, the face of Amara KO. I mean, seriously, make it. So I, I like him winning the belt back. But the finish, they could have done it better. They were protecting AJ, I think, is why it was so quirky. Yeah. Greg, what do you think? See, if you notice, they didn't do any replays of the finish, which yeah. is probably by design. Are you sure? Because that's how I saw it. Because the first time I was confused, and then I saw it a second time. I think they, unless I was watching a, a GIF or something on, on Twitter. Maybe. I missed it. I must have been I must. Have, I, I must have looked it. at something on Twitter then. Yeah, mm -hmm. that, they didn't replay because I was paying attention. I was like, okay, that was kind of a weird finish you know they're not going to show a replay of it or i was expecting shane or daniel bryan to come out or something but you know, nothing same happened here, i figure here. that they're probably got working into a storyline on smackdown saying wait a minute maybe owen's shoulders were down too like i didn't watch it back so i don't know for sure but i figure they're gonna continue this maybe they'll do a triple threat with cena at SummerSlam, or maybe cena's gonna fight in the hall jericho <laughs> oh, sorry who knows Kyle. I don't know if you guys noticed, but did you see like the really hard bump that AJ took on his like shoulder? I thought he was legitimately hurt. Maybe they like improvised the ending of the match right there or something. I'm not too sure. It looked like nah, he really think... hurt himself. Nah, he, he looked like he looked like he went down like on that shoulder intentionally. So, oh, but Probably. I don't I don't know. I'm just not a fan of them doing the title change so quickly. I mean, really, I mean the. Because AJ Styles was starting to do like the U.S. Open Challenge a little bit there with uh, John, almost like trying to be like John Cena, but with his own, yeah. uh, with his own little twist to it. But yeah, I think like what Virtue said, you know, it was done to get that get that publicity from the house show and, and get more people going to house shows. True, and they need to start putting publicity on their actual shows to get people to go to those. But that's a different <laughs> story for a different time. But um, yeah, I'm I, I'm just. I'm fine with Owens winning it back, but again, three-time U.S. champion in what three months? I mean, it seems a he little the ridiculous. The face of America, oh, America. I just it's a, it, they got to build that gimmick. I mean, if if they didn't give the belt back to Owens, that whole thing that he just did to me would have been a waste of time. That, that's just how I see it. So they, they got to put. I mean, they got to take a chance and and put the belt on that as an investment. I mean, I don't know if, if Owens will deliver or not, but they got to try. I guess, but it's just like, I don't know where these two go from here. I don't know if they're going to continue their feud for one final match at SummerSlam or if Jericho's coming back. I don't know if AJ Styles is going to go into the WWE title picture. It's like, I always look, I always try to look ahead and see like where they go from here. Yeah. But I just, I just don't, I don't really don't see a clear direction of where they're going to go with either of these guys. Well, right I, th now. I think they're going to have a blow off match at SummerSlam if I had to make a prediction right now. Yeah. But I, I I'm not a fan. The match was good until the ending. The ending just ruined the match for me. And it was honestly, this this ending is what killed the entire show for me. I'm just like, oh, boy, I know these two next two matches were going to suck. And I'm like, oh, great. This yeah. is the match that was going to – I predicted that. I'm like, okay, this is going to be the match of the night. I'm like, only yeah. WWE can make now, me feel this way. Now, right we now. Need, now we need a flag match and a Punjabi prison match to, to save this show and, and make it a memorable one. Not even the power of love could save it. Yeah, we'll get to that in a few minutes. Uh, next <laughs> up, we had the flag match, John Cena versus Rusev. This went pretty much to a T how I expected it to go, especially when Rusev set up those tables. I'm like, okay, we know what's going to happen here. Cena's going to put him through. That's going to be the finish. 
America wins. I mean, this match I thought was really boring. And this match had a shockingly lack of crowd heat for a John Cena match. Usually the crowd is, is hot for it, whether they're cheering Cena or booing him. But he barely got a reaction when he did the five-knuckle shuffle. The crowd did pop for the table spot, but not that much. And for most of the match, the crowd was just very quiet. And I think that's because of the fact that pretty much even Stevie Wonder could see this coming, that Cena was going to win here and win for America. And uh, that's exactly what happened. So I, I think maybe if these guys had not fought each other like 100 times and if the outcome wasn't so predictable, I think with a hotter crowd, this would have been a fairly decent match. But the, the way it was put together, I mean, it was just very pre predictable and very bland in my opinion. Wasn't a fan of it. I was bored. Um, Greg, your thoughts on the match, and then we'll get Kyle's thoughts and then Virtue. See, Cena and Rusev did what they could with it, but it drug on way too long. I, I'm, there, there was little hope of Rusev even coming close to winning. Yeah, there was that tease that he was going to put put the flag in, but I, I don't know. Like, I would figure that they wouldn't try and throw that together in two weeks' time and expect there to be a significant build for it. <laughs> and plus, you know what else? Um, Rusev tapped out, and I know you know it's a, a no DQ match. You know the tap outs don't count, but still, what was even the point of doing that if Russo's losing? Did I just say Russo? If Rusev, Russo, yeah, I'm thinking Russo, Russo, Russo when it comes to show, this match. Said, bro. Yeah, I think <laughs> that if if Rusev was going <laughs> to lose anyways, why even book him to tap out like that? What was the point? It just made him look even weaker. I I think that that was totally unnecessary. What did you think of the match, Kyle? You know, I really hope I, – I was really, like, not caring about this match. I was trying to point out every other little detail, like John Cena's new shoes. I mean, I'm like, I was even wearing socks. I just did not care about this match at all. I just honestly did not care. And they should have just done it on the 4th of July episode of SmackDown if they wanted to have any heat for it. Because now it's like, who cares? It's not the 4th of July anymore. And it's like, we're almost to August. And it's like, who just cares about a flag match? And it's and this And they totally, like – change the rules of a flag match. I'm like, I thought a flag match was you have to go up to a pole and grab the flag, but now you have to put it in a thing over there, the entrance ramp. I'm like, what? And then when the, the flag, just... you know, when the flag kept getting knocked out, each flag would fall to the ground. Like, that was really awkward, you know, because flags aren't supposed to be on the ground like that. Um, so that was awkward. It was a really awkward situation. And, you know, and if you notice the entrance ramp, like the American flag was lit up really bright and the Balkarian flag was barely lit up <laughs> Yeah, at all. I noticed like, that. I I'm noticed like... that. And I'm like, okay, if, if this – Rusev was really stupid because all he needed to do was just grab the American flag and just chuck it into the crowd and then Cena would never find it <laughs> if he was smart. But, but, yeah, but nobody books that. It's like nobody books heels to be strategic. It's true. like, oh, we're just going to try and win. It's like – that's that's one of the problems I have with booking. It's like, okay, if I was in this situation, what would I do? It's like, why don't they book? Why don't they book these guys for finishes, especially heels that are cheap, but they make sense? You know. Now here's a question: What was stopping Rusev from like ripping the flag in half? Would you just have to put the stick into the into the pole or whatever? I was thinking that stand? too. It's like, what if he just like broke it and threw it? It's like. You can't, you can't stick half the pole in Yeah, her. do you have to stick both pole? Like The whole thing was just I, so silly. The whole concept of the match was dumb. But Virtue, yes. what did you think of it? This was awful, okay? <laughs> it was as cliche as WWE has been the last 12 years with John Cena. You know why I like Roman Reigns? Go back to the ambulance match with Strowman. That's how you do a gimmick match. You don't do something like this. When you grab the flag... You're automatically in slow motion. When Rusev was going on the outside of the ring, why didn't he run? Why was he why, like? Yeah. it's like going up a ladder slow. Yeah, uh, somebody dude, somebody it, pointed out like somebody on Twitter said uh, the, the the flags must be like 500 pounds each. Yeah, yeah, and it's just as tribute to the troops now in July. I mean, I have all of these feel. And, and lastly, and I'm not even going to comment on the match because it, you know, a ten year old could have wrote choreographed that match. Rusev, his whole career in WWE has been John Cena's bitch. Yep. And it's ridiculous that he can't put a guy over. And it maybe it's not Cena. 
maybe it's the, the, the machine. But, like, I just can't. He came out in a tank at WrestleMania 31, but he's John Cena's B. I'm, I'm done. Next. <laughs> Virtue's yeah. rage. That is oh. virtue's rage, and we love it here. I mean, I, I am not. I'm not sorry, man. No, I'm sentiment. not sorry. No, I'm not. Sorry, not sorry. Okay. So next up, we had the the dramatic conclusion, or so we thought, of the Fashion Police's X Files, where we were, we would finally find out who attacked the horse and killed it, or whatever. Um, at first, we thought it was the Ascension, but then they took off and. Apparently it wasn't them. And then the lights went out and uh, we had the fashion police laid out. But we did not find out who the attackers were. So we have to tune in to SmackDown Live, even, even though we pay $9.99 to watch this for a conclusion. We, had, we have to tune in to SmackDown Live for the, for the finale, I guess. And uh, I'm assuming it's going to be Harper and Rowan. But you know, at least they should have like put the mask on one of them. Maybe WWE Creative doesn't even know what they want to do with this, and that's why there was no real answer to it. Um, is there anything any of you guys want to add to this, or did I pretty much sum it up? Virtue. Uh, it was. I found it hilarious when Fandango got was getting dragged, and I maybe it was, I swear it looked like his lip his lip was dragging against the ground as he was getting pulled backwards. I thought that was funny. Like to me, that made that whole sketch. He was getting pulled out of the scene by somebody mysterious. That that was good work, in my opinion. Anything? I got, I got nothing else. All right, Kyle, anything else, or you're good? I have no comments to make about this segment. <laughs> no comments. All right, you're pleading the point. I, I, I dug pretty deep for that one. All right, next up we had Sami Zayn versus Mike Kanellis. This was the uh, power of love or the power to attempt to save the show. These guys tried. They, they really tried, but it was another 50-50 booking match. You know, Sami Zayn getting his win back from... SmackDown, Maria tried to interfere. It, it did not work. Zane won with the Haluva kick. Same match with pretty much no crowd heat. Again, not much to say about it. It was just there to fill time. Uh, Greg, anything you want to say? Or you're, you're pretty much ready to talk about the main event? Yeah, I'm pretty much ready. I mean, they, they did what they could. Yeah. I've said that more than once this show. But Philly, seriously. Get it together. Pit- Pittsburgh crowds got their stuff together. You're, you're, you're disappointing Pennsylvania. Don't do that to me. I mean, you're already the disappointment for Pennsylvania as far as sports go. But uh, as wrestling crowds, you should be on the up and up. Get it together. Well, it was not It was not a sold-out show, by the way. And this is like the second SmackDown pay-per-view in a row. Um, well, no, I think Third. Money in the Bank, I'm not... I think it was sold out. It was it was either backlash sold out was or it was very close. Out. I know Backlash was definitely not sold out. But I, I'm not sure about Money in the Bank. They might have sold it out right at the end. Or they, they came very close. But yeah, again, this this is this continues a trend of, of not selling out for the pay-per-views. Um, Virtue, Can, anything you want to add to this, this Zane yeah, versus Canales match? Yeah, I mean, this was a late added match. Um, I thought Zane would win because of 50-50 booking. Uh, I'm surprised that they kind of, you know, the power of love with uh, HBK and Sensational Sherry. I mean, Canellis, uh, you know, Mike and Maria, sorry about that. I, I'm surprised that it didn't work already this early. Their little, you know, tactic of Maria interfering. What do you yeah. think, Kyle? Um, they're already ruining Mike Canellis by making him lose so quickly. I mean, what's the point of this match? Like, like what is literally the point of this match? Like, who yeah. wins in this situation? Nobody. Like who's like, yeah, exactly. I think Maria's more over than both of them, anyways. <laughs> well, I mean that's the problem too. It's it's gonna be like Sable and Mark Mero two point if they really don't give Mike some more credibility. He's just gonna end up being seen as a joke like Mark Mero. So they they really got to do something to elevate him and get fans to take him seriously. I would not do this gimmick for too long where he's just in Maria's shadow. He needs to step out and and really start standing out. I think personally. But anyways, we have the main event now, the third ever, as JBO said, it's the third ever match. There's a reason why they've only done three matches, but not for the reasons they talked about on the WWE television. Um, it was hard to see the action at times, and I got a lot of complaints from people there live that they could not see shit. Yep. It was apparently a bad situation. 
The crowd was dead for this main event, except for negative chants. They were doing delete chants. They were doing CM Punk chants. They were chanting for the 76ers. Is that right, Greg? Is that Yeah, right? sure. I, I don't follow basketball because Pittsburgh doesn't have a team. But, whatever. <laughs> but that was whatever chant they were doing. Um, the fans tried to do a Let's Go Gender slash RKO dueling chant, and uh, they, they actually got drowned out by booze. I mean, that's how much the crowd hated this match. Um, it finally got interesting at the end. I mean, as expected, I mean, we all saw this coming. Again, even Stevie Wonder saw it coming with the Singh brothers coming out. And uh, like I talked about in the predictions video, Orton bumping around, or excuse me, uh, the Singh brothers bumping around for Orton. One of them did the Shawn Michaels style bump, you know, from the top of the cage through the announce table. That was the big highlight of the match. I mean, that was the yes. most memorable thing. And that's from a guy who wasn't even a participant in the match. Aaron, they showed that like four times after it happened. Did you notice that? Well, yeah, the, the I mean that was like the, the one table. memorable thing on this pay per view, really. But and, as the um, match was happening, they went back to it multiple times. Well, yeah, they got to show something interesting so people can stay awake. But anyways, um, you know, you know, it's bad when people were wanting to see the great Kali show up, and there was speculation early on the day. I even tweeted out about it that um, Kali posted some pictures of himself. Um, in an airplane this morning and how often does he do that the day of a WWE pay-per-view and uh, there's a reason he posted it because he showed up on the pay-per-view the great Kali is back ladies and gentlemen and uh, the great Kali helped Jinder Mahal retain the WWE title um, the match was a disaster more or less um, like like JBL said there's a reason WWE has not done one of these matches in 10 years and because it's just a terrible concept and um there's a funny part where um i don't know if you guys remember when batista did that jump from one cage to the mm -hmm. other that was a really cool spot but orton basically just maneuvered himself from one cage to the other and the announcers were talking about how this was some really impressive feat and i'm like dude batista jumped from one cage to the other come on now but the announcing was terrible by the way that's the other thing on this entire show I thought it was so bad. Um, Greg, your thoughts on the match and Kali returning and everything else? See, the sad thing is, like, even though they've only done three of them, this was actually easily the best Punjabi prison match uh, that they've had. Um, but, but the thing is, it wasn't overly memorable other than the Singh brother spot, who he wasn't even in the match. And who whoever thought like there would be a giant reaction for the great Kali returning? It's I like know, right? holy crap, it's the great Kali, and and he was back in his like old like 2007 gear, the black gear, not uh, the Punjabi Playboy or whatever. It's like he was serious great Kali, so that was that was all right. Um, but I, I hope this feud is over for everybody's sake, not just for Orton's and Ginger's, but. Crying out loud, they need to move him on to something else. Hopefully this was oh. a one-off thing for Kali. Could you imagine Kali versus Orton at SummerSlam? I, that was my first immediate thought after that. It's like Orton gets his revenge and RKO's Kali at SummerSlam. I could I could totally see it happening. I mean, this, this has got to be a, like a one-off thing because the, Kali barely could walk to the ring. How could he could barely walk to the ring the last four years he was there. Could, even, your, could even pass the about? WWE's wellness test at this point. I, I don't, I don't know, but virtue. Your I, I guess it, the match was boring. I liked it slightly better than the flag match. The Sings livened it up a little bit when they got there. There was the spot where Orton went to do the DDT. To Jinder went to kick him. One foot went through the prison cell. And, and then the other, and then it was blatant that he put his second foot up there so Orton could do that DDT, and and that that kind of irked me too. Like, I mean, these guys are professionals; they they should know better than that. Um, the great Belly, if you notice, is he's got a nice belly on him now. He, he came out just as I predicted. Um, I would actually, if he would have came out and maybe cost the Hall the title for and with some weird, you know, maybe Corbin could have cashed in. That, that would have maybe made this a little bit better of a show. But from what I could see, it, it just uh, too gimmicky. Kyle? Uh, does WWE forget their own history? Because yes. when Jinder Mahal debuted, 
he hated the great Kali, and now all of a sudden he worships the great Kali like he's some freaking wrestling god or something like that. Well, they're it's both like, from the country with 1.3 billion people. And, yeah, I just hated the outcome of this match, and I buzzed my head literally today because I already knew this pay-per-view was going to be crap. <laughs> and Jinder Mahal is the reason that I buzzed my head in the first place. You're just going to have to keep buzzing your head every pay-per-view until WWE I know. gets it right. I know. I, I just never liked Jinder Mahal as the champion, and I still can't take him seriously. He's been WWE champion now for two months, and I still can't take him well, seriously as the WWE champion. Is now, with that, said, with that said, Aaron, do we know the figures for WWE Network subscriptions in India? Did, did they release that? That's something I want to look into and find out, yeah. especially since Mahal has been champion. I don't know if it may. He's a, he's a Canadian, right? But I, like, I just want to see if this is paying off somewhere. For WWE, because it's not right. here. Well, I haven't seen any date on that yet, so I mean, okay. he's still champion for now. I mean, like, that's what, yeah, exactly. What I what I predicted yeah. all along was Cena beats him at SummerSlam, and then maybe Corbin cashes in on Cena, and they start a new feud and go in a new direction. I mean, that that that's been my prediction for months, and that that's what I'm expecting. And uh, you know, figured Orton would lose this match with the usual shenanigans, and that's exactly what happened. So, all right, time for the letter grades for WWE Battleground. Like I said at the beginning, I thought that this was the worst pay-per-view of 2017 so far, and I, I think it's most likely going to be the worst pay-per-view of the year when we do the NoDQ.com year-end awards. Um, I would give this show a D, and I'm giving it a D instead of an F because the Singh brother took the cool bump. Kali returned, which I guess was okay for a little nostalgia moment, I guess, whatever you want to call it. And, um, you know, there, I, I felt the tag match was pretty good. I felt the tag match, if the tag match was just average, then maybe this pay-per-view would have been a D- minus for me. But I'll, I'll give it a D. I'm giving it a D. Uh, Virtue, and then Greg, and then Kyle. The pleasant surprise of Natty. Um, I really wanted Owens to win the U.S. title back, and then the New Day winning the tag titles. Still didn't make up for those two horrendous matches. I'm going to put it right in the middle. And this is a bad grade for me. You know how highly I rate my shows, especially when I see the talent put the work in, which they still did. But I a C. Okay. A C. So wait a Flat minute. Flat C. Okay. If you, if you have to rank all 12 WWE pay-per-views, shouldn't there be some pay-per-views that are below average and some, you know, maybe uh, – Four that are above average. But four see, that are my average, my app, but my grading scale average. is different than yours. Like a B is probably average for me. Status okay, of, quo. of the twelve so, WWE pay per views in a calendar year, let's say two thousand seventeen, where do you think this one will fall for you? It, it, this is my worst one. It's my worst. So grade. it's going to fall on your bottom four then. So it's going to yeah, be a this, below this average pay per view. Yet one. you're giving it a C a C grade. Yes. Okay. And, and again, you, well, you have a weird yeah. scale. Yeah. All right, Greg. Let's see what you have to say. All right. You know, I, I talked at the beginning of the show that we were, that it's like, it's not as bad as everybody thinks, but the more we talked about it, it's like, maybe it was. <laughs> um, I'm going to give it a C minus. Uh, the tag titles honestly saved the show for me because that was a wrong that? Well, Aaron, did, you know, Aaron wants someone to grade it a D with him. That's why he said that. That's about why I'm me. saving Kyle for last. All right. Go ahead, Kyle. From what I saw, so I can't judge the Shinsuke Nakamura, Baron Corbin, or the tag titles. I'm just basing it completely off oh, of what I well saw. That's not quite accurate. <sighs> the tag match was pretty good. So okay. whatever you give it, we're uh, going to have to like bump it up like a half, half grade. From what I saw tonight, D minus. Okay, well then we'll so bump D. it up to a, maybe a D or a D plus. There you go. There you go. There you go. There you go. All right. Greg, Greg and I look at the work a little bit deeper than the storylines and the booking, so I, I like all of our grades. It, it, it says, I mean, those are good grades. I want to see what everyone else thinks. Well, let's, in the comments. let's look at No DQ's poll. Right now, it is 55% thumbs down, 19% thumbs up, 16% thumbs middle, and then 9% did not watch. So it looks like a middle finger right now, basically, the, the poll results. With an overwhelming thumbs down, so was not was not a very successful pay per view in terms of uh, fan fan happiness. 
We'll see what you guys think on, on uh, NoDQ.com, obviously with your comments and on YouTube. So go ahead and leave your feedback, what you liked, what you did not like. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Let's get the plugs out, Greg, and then Virtue, and then Kyle. At PA Sensation on Twitter. I'd say Instagram, but I'm barely on it. So at PA Sensation on Twitter. Um, if you friend me on Facebook, like I said before, I'm not going to add you because I don't know you. So Twitter. At PA Sensation. And also watch Wrestling Trivia Challenge episode number two, Greg versus Jeff. Excellent match. I mean, that was one of the most intense trivia matches that I've ever seen over the many years that I've seen various wrestling trivia matches. This might have been the greatest wrestling trivia match of all time, but Kyle might be able to top it. Kyle might give Jeff a bigger run for his money if Jeff won, which I'm not saying he did or not because that would be a spoiler. Uh, maybe Greg won. You guys would have to tune in and find out. Maybe you've seen it. Maybe you haven't yet. But go check it out if you have not seen it yet. Um, anyways, Virtue, your plugs. Twitter, at NoDQ underscore Virtue. Virtue's Rage on NoDQ.com. And go check the last one I just posted out. I, maybe once in a while I'll do like a video instead of, because I don't know how much people like to read. They might just like to listen. Go check that out. Hi, right, Kyle. All right, you guys can follow me on Twitter, at Interstate Kyle. You guys can subscribe to me on YouTube, at Interstate Kyle. I have not posted a lot of videos lately because I've been working and I've just been super busy, but I'll be trying to upload some more YouTube videos from the Reno Tahoe area. If you guys want to see any videos from the Reno Tahoe area, come subscribe to me on YouTube, at Interstate Kyle. Well, what did John Lennon say? Sometimes life happens when you're busy making other plans. You should know you're the Beatles guy. I, no, I, I didn't. I honestly did not follow the Beatles after their freaking breakup that much. I don't know much of their. They story. have some I, I, good I, stuff. They oh have some gosh, great Aaron. solo albums. George Go Harrison's self title is great. Honestly, I I followed George Harrison quite a bit after the breakup, but I didn't really follow John Lennon that much. Or well, Carter Lennon's Aaron. first two albums were good, and then he kind of went downhill from there, but. You got to check out Plastic Ono Band. That's a great album. And Imagine. I think my I, th I think my grandpa has that album. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm, I'm just more supporting you, Kyle. But the yeah, but wait, that is a Lennon quote from uh, Beautiful Boy. Life is what happens to you while you're busy making other plans. So, shit happens. <laughs> but anyways, check out Kyle's videos. Interstate Kyle. Check out PA Sensation on Twitter and NoDQ underscore Virtue on NoDQ.com. Of course, you can find me on all social media at Aaron Rift and at NoDQDOTCOM and um, buy a t-shirt. We're all wearing one right now. ProWrestlingTees.com. Search NoDQ or check out the link in the description box. And on that note, we will see you guys next time.